Hello everyone, Quickman Boy here, and welcome to my build guide for my Crit Face Breaker build. This character has been a lot of fun to play, has good clear speed, good survivability, and is overall a very powerful character which has very high DPS. Um, one side note of this character, you can only make this character in the new Talisman Challenge League. So, I'm gonna go over my gear, my passive skill tree, and the gems I'm using. If you have any questions about the build, feel free to ask me in the comments. So, let's take a look at our passive skill tree, the gear, and the gems I'm using. And I, as, you, as always, if you have any questions about the build, feel free to ask me in the comments. So, the passive skill tree. The first thing I'm actually gonna show is one of, uh, before I do anything in the skill tree and show it off, is actually to show the most important item you need to build a crit face break wheel. And it is, uh, it is a Regal's Curse, which actually makes that your base unknown crit chance is 7. So you actually can crit when you're having uh, this one on you. Normally you can't crit when unknown, it's the weapon that gives you your crit chance, but now you can crit without any weapon. Also, this uh, amulet uh, makes so uh, modifiers to claw damage will apply to unarmed, modifiers to claw attack speed will apply to unarmed, and modifiers to claw critical strike chance will also apply to unarmed. You must have this item to be able to build this build. So, starting as a, as a duelist, you can make this build as a, as a ranger, you can make it as a scion, and you can also make it as a shadow if you want. I uh, choose Duelist purely because I really like the Duelist. <laughs> I really like the Duelist and Duelist area. So I took the attack speed and accuracy, uh, physical damage and life, and then more physical damage and life. This is how I level up the level up the character, by the way. I took the evasion and life and armor, evasion and life and armor, all these nice notes here. I took this Master of the Arena. I have Bravery. I took Artifact Gladiator. I have Defiance, all these nice notes here which give melee damage with shields. I have Golem's Blood. And I went down for Retaliation and also uh, I took this a little, little bit later in the game. When I needed more, more defense, I was about level uh, 50 when I took this one. Also uh, I have Cloak and Shade. I waited a long time before I took uh, Iron Reflexes, that's just the tenement depending on what gear you're using. If you're using pure armor gear and don't have uh, pretty much any evasion, you don't really need iron reflexes. So that depends on your gear. Then I went up here, I took this Yule Sock here, which are Wolos Rich, which increases my uh, weapons and uh, unknown uh, range, which uh, makes that uh, it can hit enemy further away. Uh, by the way, about uh, Wolos Rich, uh, to get Wolos Reach, you just need to do uh, one of Yuna's, uh, I think it was Yuna, uh, quest in Act 2 in Cruel. If you're doing, uh, you're gonna find that Golden Hand in Full, uh, full Shine Ruin. If you bring it uh, the, back that to her, and she will actually give you Wolos Reach together with three other Yules. So that's how you get Wolos Reach. And it looks like this. This, this is how Wolos Reach looks like. Here we have a uh, berserking. I took this one uh, when I when I get here. I actually took berserking. I have taken uh, constitution. I actually took this whole life wheel here. I'm going to take this one when I'm leveling up. I took this whole life wheel here when I'm leveling up, which makes the leveling process even uh, easier. I took path of the war as well. Then I went uh, to sentinel. You can take this one, but I don't recommend taking this in early game. And the units I'm using it uh, march march all. Uh, Astrocity, astrocity, I can't really pronounce it, I'm sorry. But it increased the area of effect when unknown, which is really nice. And I went down here. I, I have profane chemistry, but I also took this later in game when I needed more life and also increases my the strength of my flasks. I went for the evasion way here to take reflexes. I don't really need reflexes, but this is the shortest way I can get to the other area. So I went this way and it actually gave me pretty good value uh, if I'm using. Uh, dual evasion gear or actually pure evasion gear you can actually use pure evasion gear on some places i have taken hide killer and i took a uh, harrier i go i'm planning on taking true strike uh, to maybe taking true strike later to increase my crit chance i have a plug list which uh, for every three uh, dexterity all cause in this uh, area you see this vast area actually give me 1% uh, increase evasion, 
claw physical damage and melee physical damage when on all. So it makes uh, give me a good amount of damage and even some evasion. So it's a very powerful yule, but you don't have to have it. Then I went up here, I took a coordination, which are really nice. I took blood siphon, siphon, sorry. I took a trick three. I took assassination. I took a cold hearted calculation. And before we go and gonna go up here, I actually gonna talk about this one down here. I have Well of Blades, I have Fangs of Viper, I have Nullification, and also have Blood Wrinkle. Blood Wrinkle is pretty important because it gives me, me life back when I, I damage an enemy with physical damage, which are really important. Then I went down here to take uh, Claws of the uh, my, my Pride, I think it's called. Uh, claw damage notes and claw attack speed note and claw crit notes actually apply to my unknown damage now because of rewild scrolls. So uh, my plan is actually to take all of these notes here. When I'm leveling up even more, I will, I will take all of these notes here if I'm leveling up that far. And then I went up here after taking cold cal calculation. You can just take these two intelligence notes to get to claws of the falcon, which are very, very powerful. And that's pretty much my uh, passive skill tree. If you have any questions about the passive skill tree, let me know in the comments. So, let's take a look at the gear now. First and foremost, as I said before, uh, Recoil's Curse is a must-have in this uh, build. And uh, to be able to get this one, you must play in the Talisman Challenge League. And you must play in the standard, non-hardcore Talisman Challenge League. You can't play it in hardcore because this one do not exist in hardcore. At least, at least not to my knowledge. Then I, and then I have uh, Abyssus, which are a very powerful helmet. Uh, this helmet uh, is uh, really special because uh, it will increase the... Very, actually give me a good amount of flat physical damage to attacks. And it will also increase uh, immensely increase my critical strike multiplier when melee. But it will increase the damage I take from physical damage. So you are a melee character. And you take increased phys uh, physical damage from other melee enemies. So you need to be careful and think about uh, sometimes what enemy you're fighting. Normally it's not a problem, but uh, if you're fighting a very hard hitting enemy, be careful and don't let them hit you too many times because this helmet makes you take more damage. But usually it's not a problem. And I and actually I almost forget to mention the most important, uh, the second most important item, the face breaker. It's not that expensive, and try to tra if you're not find anyone, uh, try to trade with someone. They are not that expensive to get, and they're very powerful. And again, they they are the main reason that you're doing a third amount of damage when you're using face breaker, which are these ones. I'm using this ring here again. Uh, I really need uh, wanted some accuracy on my rings. It's not the best ring, but in the, it serves the purpose well. It gave me a good amount of resistance, accuracy, flat physical damage, which are really important. And also gave me increased maximum life, which are really nice. I'm using a belly of the beast armor to increase my life, mostly for my life. This one is pretty terrible roll, but it's better than nothing. And I really like this armor. You don't have to have a belly of the beast. You can use a rare armor instead, which will be almost as good, not as good as this one, but it will be almost as good. And you don't have to have a 5 link, you can actually have a 4 link. You will do a lot less damage, but it will still work. I'm using this belt here, I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna try. But the reason using this belt is it gives you a good amount of flat physical damage, adds 5 to 15 physical damage attack, which gave you a huge amount of damage. It also comes with some nice life, Come with some a uh, good amount of strength, some small cold resistance, and it also increases my life flasks, which are really nice. I use and I'm using this ring here, which are high, uh, very high on resistance, which are really nice. I'm using this shield here, which are great old ones award, which are really nice. Uh, it doesn't look like this. This is actually a reskin. It is. Uh, it has a thousand teeth uh, taboo skin. So I use a risky note, but uh, you can see it on screen right now how it looks like. I'm using it for it, it gives flat physical damage, attack speed, some life, and some chance to block spells. If you want, uh, will be more defensive. Uh, 
you don't care if you don't have that high of damage. Try to get a, a rare shield which have and then try to get a rare shield with have about thousand armor, good life, good resistance, and if you can get one, someone with flat physical damage on. There are other shields would have it. Because you can actually craft a mod on that on the shield. And finally we have the boots. These boots here uh, movement speed on boots in a Facebook build which are using a cyclone. It's pretty much a must-have if you ask me. And 30% uh, movement speed, this is, pro uh, this is probably the best boots I could ever get in this build. They are really really good. It could have a lot it could have a lot more in uh, armor innovation, but they are they are working really well and give me a good amount of resistance because if you have seen it resistance can be hard to get in this build because abyssus have no resist regal's curse have no resist great old ones wand have no resist facebreaker have no resist and this one have resistance but not that much so you need to make up for your resistance on just these slots here these uh, four uh, four slots here which are do doable so now we're gonna go over my games I'm using. I'm gonna start with my cyclone setup. You can use other attacks such as Ice Crash will uh, work just fine by using a cyclone. And uh, cyclone is supported by added fire damage, blood magic, faster attacks, and mainly physical damage. There are uh, there are another uh, support you can use, and you can just play around a little bit and find what setup works for you. If you want more survivability, you can have, for example, life gain on hit, you can have a mail, uh, life leech, for example, you can have fortify. So you have a lot of options to use. And uh, by the way, uh, the reason I, do, uh, as you can see now, I have no mana, I resolve all my mana and auras. The reason I can use my, still use my attack without any mana here, uh, because I'm using my life instead. That is because of uh, blood make. So if you, you're gonna get a blood magic as a uh, quest reward anyway, so it's not hard to get. So using blood magic in uh, using life instead of mana. Now the other setups I have, I have a custom damage taken setup which are immortal call. Uh, I also have a purity of fire just yes, because if I go into f if I see an enemy which are high uh, doing a lot of uh, fire damage, I can switch out one of my auras for purity of fire. It will not be activated when the cause of damage taken is going off. And I have a cause of damage taken, which also are linked to Tempest Shield. Uh, I have uh, another setup, which are my Vol Cyclone. Uh, I'm using Vol Cyclone to clear big areas and just have a ton of fun. But uh, as many of you, of you probably know, Vol Cyclone is a bit, little bit of a risky strategy. So I support the Vol Cyclone with uh, Fortify to give me increase, also increase damage and increase uh, increase uh, protection. Also using Life Gun Hit so I get life back when I'm hitting enemies. And I also have an item rarity because why not? Uh, set up uh, using I have a blood rage which I sometimes use when I want more damage. I have uh, increased duration on uh, blood rage so the works a little bit longer. I have hell of ash which I sometimes use when I want more damage and don't need as much protection. And I have a reckoning which are just a block skill which doing a fair bit of damage to the enemy when I block them. I also have uh, purity of elements if I. If you ever need more resistance, it's good to have something like this with you. I have a hatred, which are one of my main skin, my main arrows. I always have it on, and I have grace, which protects me against physical damage, because it gave me over oh, two thousand more in uh, two thousand additional evasion rating. But all of that evasion rating is converted to armor, so it will protect me even more against physical attacks. And that's pretty much my setup. I almost forget I'm using a temper, uh, using a temperature which uh, activated when I taking damage, and that's increased my uh, block chance as well. And my damage right now with uh, my normal aura, it is uh, 80,342. Uh, 80, I think I said that right at least. And that's pretty much my setup. Uh, I have a purity of uh, elements. Uh, purity of ice. If I ever going to fight f uh, really dangerous ice enemies, I can just pop this on me to protect me against ice damage. 
And that's pretty much the build. If you have any questions about the build, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'm gonna do my best to answer you. And uh, by the way, oh, I almost forgot it. If you're wondering what this is for Floss, this is a Romy's uh, concoction, which uh, increases my block chance immensely when I activate it. And I used to activate this when, if I use the Involve Cyclone, or if I'm fighting particularly nasty, hard-hitting enemies by using this one. And uh, as always, always use a remove bleed flask on a build like this, because Abyssus makes you take more damage from bleed. So having a remove uh, bleeding on use flask are very important because you're going to die to corrupt blood and corrupt the bloodlines and even enemy that shoots uh, bleeding things they'll probably not kill you as uh, dangerous as uh, the mother that are but having anti-bleed flask is very important so always have that and uh, when i'm playing a build like this when you you're using a movement skill uh, having a flask like uh, this quicksilver flask that lets you move faster will actually increase both your clear speed and survivability in a good amount. So I'm always carrying a quicksilver flask in this build. Uh, if I'm gonna find some more dangerous enemy which do a, ton of, a certain amount of elemental numbers, I can switch these two flasks out for elemental resistance flask. Anyway, I hope you guys like this uh, build guide and uh, if you have any questions about the build overall or questions for me on this build or any other medals on my YouTube channel, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'm going to see you guys next time.